<laughs> Welcome back. The Fender Coffee fam has been brewing coffee all over the Fargo Mort area since 2017. Welcome back, gentlemen. It's good to have you guys here. Yeah, it's awesome well, to be here. What are we focusing on today? So we've got two different types of coffees here today from the same relative region, um, and we're going to talk about how they are processed and how that affects their taste. Oh. Nice. Not yeah. just talk about it. You're going to taste the difference. Yeah. So That's why we're from, here. Where are they from originally? <laughs> So they are both two Ethiopian coffees, um, grown um, not very far from each other, but the big thing that makes a huge difference is how they are treated after they were grown. So mm. on the right, we've got a natural process um, coffee. So that just means after the cherries were harvested, that they were set out on raised beds, let to dry with the skin intact, because um, coffee's grown like a cherry on a cherry. So they let that dry. Um, and then after that, they remove the skin, and it imparts a really fruity taste on the okay. coffee. So go ahead and Did try you know that, that out. Christopher. No. So they. You didn't know coffee. <laughs> they hand Gosh. they hand take off the oh. skin. Oh. Well, and then what? No, they they hand pick each cherry. So it, it grows on a, like a tree or a shrub, uh, and they mm -hmm. pick every cherry off. And then there's a a few different ways to do it, um, but they choose to leave these ones and sit in the sun and when that hap or when they do that a few chemical reactions happen oh, yeah. that result in a sweeter taste than uh yes. than what you might be used to Very so then nice. the next one is yeah and then an alternative to that is a washed processed coffee so instead of letting it sit out on those raised beds after it's been harvested uh they put it in these big tubs um after after they depulp it and take the skin off um, they put it in these big tubs, let it ferment in there, and it really changes the taste of the coffee. I think I like this one. Yeah, yeah, it gives it a really clean taste. Um, this one kind of reminds me a lot of Fruity Pebbles. <laughs> oh, yeah. I didn't think that. I'm kind of a, like a coffee snob over here. I'm like, let me, say, <laughs> let me well, smell yeah, my coffee I didn't realize first. It's such a pure palate out of it. <laughs> well, let's just talk about the book that we have sitting over t here, too, The World Atlas of Coffee. Chris, maybe you should get this and learn a little bit more I, I about should. coffee I need and to where it comes from. <laughs> Yeah, so this was actually a gift from our friends at Killer Coffee down in Oklahoma City. Ooh, roast yeah. it. Yep. Yeah. Um, oh. And this is a book written by James Hoffman. He's one of the biggest coffee professionals out there. Um, and it covers everything from uh, growing coffee, where it's grown, uh, the impact that um, those, those regions have on the world, like uh, how coffee got introduced to those regions, um, as well as brewing, roasting, everything underneath wow. the sun. Wow. And... Coffee. Uh, and it's oh. got a lot of pictures in there, so it's oh. good for me. Yeah. Perfect. Does it teach you how to uh, do foam art? <laughs> yeah, no. it actually. Oh, really? Yeah, there's a section in there. Yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> yeah. Now I need and, it. And speaking of the latte art, so uh, latte our art. our sister company Fargo Coffee is mm -hmm. is going out of business. We're uh, we're closing our doors on Saturday. Oh my goodness. But we're gonna go out with a little bit of a party. Uh, so on Saturday night at 6.30, we're going to do a latte art competition. <gasps> all skill levels welcome. Perfect. So if you want to come on up, it's $5 buy-in, winner take all, yeah. and you can show off your little latte art skills. All <laughs> right, it's going to be a disaster, but let's do it. <laughs> so yeah. let's say I'm, I'm kind of going through these coffees, but I want to find something that I just absolutely love. I mean, yeah. You guys obviously have the expertise. So how do I go and taste and find something like, okay, that's my coffee? Mm. Hmm. You just try it. Yeah. Um, so I mean, where do I go? How do I even go? I mean, from what, talking to you guys, I'm, yeah. I'm learning there's like a gazillion different kinds of coffees. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a good resource um, that I've, I've been a big fan of lately is Trade Coffee Company. Uh, they'll put you through a little quiz online and they'll recommend <laughs> some coffee that, that might fit your flavor profile, stuff that you like. They'll ask you questions about like, oh, what kind of candy do you normally eat? Mm -hmm. Or what oh. flavors do you, do you enjoy? And then kind of recommend coffees off of that. Um, and they'll send coffee from roasters all over the United States. Nice. I yeah. think you should just do the old-fashioned way where you just go to every single coffee shop <laughs> and order everything off the menu and just sit there for a few hours. I wish I had the time to do that, but I mean, coffee's become such a, you know, fine, it's like a fine wine these days. Yeah, yeah. it's oh, a craft, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, Brooke, do you sound like you're a coffee connoisseur over Oh, here. I'm kind of a coffee snob. Like, I went from, like, drinking my dad's, like, Folgers in the morning <laughs> to being like, um, this coffee doesn't taste like... This good is, coffee. This is not up to my standards. This is not up to my standards. It's actually one of the things you'll learn in that book is that there are different grades to the coffee, right? So there is a co there's a commodity coffee, and mm -hmm. then there's specialty coffee, which is the stuff that that we serve, and they um, they grade it differently when it after it gets harvested and and processed and all that stuff, mm -hmm. and they'll even do some grading by size and things like that. Like this is a kind of like how eggs are, yeah, yeah, yeah. double A jumbo whatever. Um, 
They do the same thing with coffee beans. They filter it through a sieve, and if it's so big, then it's a this X grade coffee. And yeah. Folgers is good. I'm not harping on Folgers, by the way. I still have the K cup. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, if guys want to maybe have you come out and do some work with their company for an event, how do they get a hold of you? Yeah, um, they can get a hold of us uh, through our website, uh, thundercoffeefargo.com. There's a little. Uh, you can get a hold of us at info at thundercoffeefargo. Dot com, I think. Or, yeah, 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 that's right. Yep. <laughs> and then, or uh, thundercoffeefargo at gmail.com. Yep. Nice. And what was that website you mentioned again where I can go figure out? Yeah, Trade Coffee Co. Um, and they'll send you coffee from all the best roasters in the U.S. Thank you very much, Sean. Yeah. Anything yeah. else you want to add, Mrs. Coffee Connoisseur? No. Just, <laughs> coffee's good. Drink it. All right, stick around. When we come back, we're kicking off Giving Hearts Day. It's this week. 